Okay. So then you're getting your business from multiple sources, which is great. It sounds like you're doing really good with that. So you said, uh, since the last time I talked to you was like January, 2021. So, uh, what has, uh, what have you added to your business since then? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to start a new business. Um, I had to go through a process. So I don't know if I mentioned it before. So I used to, back when I was in corporate America, one of the jobs I had actually here in Atlanta was uh, I was a logistics manager for Amazon. Okay. It's crazy. Um, see how much they grow. So I got hired. Amazon offered me a job. Uh, it was my second job out of college. I completed a business management program. They offered me a job in 2015, I want to say October 2015. So Amazon Logistics was still fairly new. Uh, they were opening their first delivery station here in Atlanta. Uh, time flies because now they probably got uh, man, probably had 10, 15 of them. Um, and so I, I, you know, fast forward, I got the job and I became one of the managers to open their first delivery station here in Atlanta. And it's it's the first one and it's so small. They're literally in the middle of closing it down as we speak. Um <clears throat> But so Amazon has this, um, this, this, this thing, um, people always see Amazon drivers out on the road, like they see the Amazon van and they see people wearing Amazon. Uh, so those people don't actually work for Amazon. Uh, obviously most people don't know that, uh, all that is con is outsourced work. Um, they call it a delivery service provider. So all those drivers you see driving those vans when Amazon polos that actually deliver the packages, they work for a DSP and that. DSP has an owner, right? Um, that they, they they work and operate out of an Amazon facility, you know, where they get their packages every day, sort them, load up, and, and roll out. Um, so Amazon has a DSP program. So it's called a delivery service provider program. What that program is is anybody can apply. You can go through a rigorous process of all type of interview, webinar, business plan, all type of stuff. Um, and basically what it boils down to is thousands of people apply, less than 1% get accepted. You get accepted, then you, um, you know, you join the bench um, and then you become a DSP owner. Uh, you obviously, you know, can give your ideal location based on all the cities that they roll out. Um, and then when, you know, that area comes available, if you're, if you're particular, um, they give you a timeline. And then y'all y'all will get started. So this program, basically, to where someone only needs some odd thousands of dollars um, to get started, um, they go from five routes up to forty based on their performance. It's a program that'll take them from you know starting literally, like I said, with some odd thousand to in their first year they'll gross you know a few million just delivering Amazon packages. Now it's not easy per se you gotta know what you're doing um but it's a good program that they have um and they're literally you know making millionaires out of hundreds and thousands of people by giving them this opportunity to be a dsp owner um and deliver packages on their behalf you know if you're an owner of a dsp and you got 40 routes uh now you probably have you know close to 80 people working for you you know between routes management supervisor dispatchers um so it's yeah it's 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 definitely something so um lucky for me i have back up because like i said i used to work for amazon on this side of the business so i understand it very well and i just you know was fortunate to be able to go through the interview process and and get accepted and now i'm just waiting for uh you know figuring out what my location will be Ah, wow. I am like just beaming over here. That is exceptional. And so because of your prior contacts, is that how you heard about that program? Or was it through another means? No, I knew about the program from when I when you worked when I, there. When I worked there, I worked on this side of the business. I was working with the DSPs to make sure these packages were getting delivered. I was just Got working it. from an Amazon standpoint. Okay. Okay. And so then I am very interested in this and I'm sure there'll be others who are interested in this as well. So you said a lot of people apply only about 1% get in. So that just lets me know that you have your stuff, you know, you're all your stuff in a row that you are a uh, professional. You did well with the interviews and all that, but you know, being a Citadel is a Citadel graduates, you know, yeah. I, I, I would expect yeah. nothing less. Huh? So you care about all that. They don't care. <laughs> They don't care about all that. They want to know that you know how to run a business. 
Yeah, they want to know that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, look, I won't put it on at the end. You know, being going <laughs> through that, being deployed, being in corporate America, all that kind of stuff helps you to know what you're talking about, right? And be able to present yourself in a way that uh, they know that you're a good, trustworthy uh, and will be a good, trustworthy owner. So you said you're waiting for your route. So you, um, I guess you said you pick what you want and then you have to wait for that to become available or how does that work? So, yes. Yeah, so I'm waiting for my station. So um, you get to pick three, you know, your three top cities um, and my cities, you know, they don't necessarily seem to be coming available anytime soon. Um, however, um, I don't have to stick to those cities. So I recently, you know, just said, hey, just send me whatever okay. you know, comes available. And, you know, they started, you know, started sending some things um, because the reality is, um I shouldn't necessarily, you know, just stick to a particular city because the city I, I the cities I want um, will also be the most, you know, cost me the most because a city like Atlanta, you know, when it comes to driver insurance is like one of the top in the nations. Mm -hmm. So I'll be spending, you know, 50,000 a year in insurance where I can be, you know, they are, you know, mentioned Wisconsin to me the other day and it would be one of the lowest in the nation, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I had to start really, you know, crunching the numbers and looking at everything they were sending to me. And, uh, you know, I'm open to taking the place. It's not my ideal location because the reality is, um, I'll, I'll save a lot, a lot of money and that'll, you know, obviously go towards the net. Yeah. Um, again, finances, right? Um, I just love, you know, it just kind of works itself through as you're uh, talking about this business. And so you get to pick the cities. Um, you're like, hey, you know, tell me what else is out there. Um, so it sounds to me, though, like you're getting ready to hire some more people. Yes. Yeah, so um, we will uh, once we, which is June 30th, I was told, you know, here soon, you know, they should come out, you know, with the re the list for the remainder of the year. Um, so, you know, hopefully, um, you know, I'll, I'll know something soon. I can I can be on board with the city and hopefully get started before peak season so we can uh, end the year fully staffed and, and working throughout peak season. Um, okay. That's where the money okay. Is. <laughs> All right. I just, oh my gosh, you just always have uh, just such a light and just a very clear headed about what you're doing. I know that you're a young man. Um, and so I'm just always excited about uh, what you have going on. And so let me ask you this. So you are running three businesses now, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, Amazon, <laughs> when that's fully running, it'll make three. Um, okay. and, and, you know, like I told my aunt and sister, they both asked, well, what are you going to do? Uh, well, Amazon would be the only company paying me millions. Uh, <laughs> so if I have to stop doing inspections, it'll be okay. Um, okay. But there's, you know, all jokes aside, there, there's many ways you can go about it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I've, I've been around Amazon in this business for a while. You know, I know a guy, well, I don't personally know him, but, uh, you know, we've seen a guy do this exact thing. You know, he literally just ran his company. His was in Baltimore out of one of the Baltimore delivery stations, did it for a year and a half. And then and he sold his company. So Amazon and let you sell it to oh, and another like, and let you sell it to somebody who will meet their credentials, that who will pass the background check and meet their credentials. Um, and I didn't say his name, but yeah, he, he, he did it. He did it for a year and a half and sold it for one point seven million. So it's like, wow, wow, like, you know, sometimes it, it might be okay to put your eggs in one basket in this case. <laughs> well, and, and what you're also speaking to, though, is just business because some many people think I'm going to start this business. I'm going to run it for the rest of my life. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. Where others are like, you know, this will be a short term goal. I may run it for a few years, but I, but my intention was never to do this forever. And so really, um, it sounds to me like you're giving yourself uh, multiple options of, uh, you know, businesses and um who knows what may come up that you're you know that you see uh some interest in that this just kind of takes you to that next level so i just think like you know how you're thinking in your mind and you're kind of looking for things and opportunities i just think that we all should be doing that um and then going with the things that you know you already um have experience here you you've already worked on this side of the business so this seems like a really good fit so can i ask this question you don't have to tell me what 
what you did, but like, is there, I'm sure for this program, people who are looking for, if they go to a website or something, it's going to tell them what the cost is to invest. Can you give us a range? Um, yeah, no. Um, so if you, people can Google like Amazon DSP, it should pull up like, you know, all that information in, in the website. Um, but so, and that's another thing. So they tell you the cost is, um, uh, you need like 10,000 to start, but then you really need 40 because, um, they say it's usually about 10,000 or less to start. And then you should have, you know, they'll verify that you have a backup of like 30. Um, okay. then if you're a minority, which I'm considered a minority, they give you the 10. So I will come out of pocket for that 10. Um, but it's so low because they've changed the program. Um, when I worked at Amazon, it was different. Now Amazon actually, you know, they obviously want to set people up to succeed. You know, they provide the vans, um, but, you know, you handle maintenance and things like that. Um, and a lot of, you know, obviously, you know, when you get started, a lot of stuff you don't necessarily pay for up front, right? So if you hire a driver, you know, and get them trained, they may not get paid till the first, you know, two weeks or so. And then by then you would have already been accumulating. Amazon has been paying you, you know, for your, you know, your routes, your package count and things like that. So you've already accumulated, you know, money. Um, and things like that to handle. So, you know, insurance you'll pay, uh, you know, as you go, things like that. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's set up, it's really set up for you to succeed. Anybody that understands, you know, business acumen, financial acumen per se, you know, mm -hmm. how to look at a P&L, understand their, their variable costs, their fixed costs, um, and can forecast well, you know, and look at trends, we'll, we'll succeed. <laughs> well, I should say, we know how to, most importantly, they know how to manage people and processes because that's how you succeed as being a, a you know, owner of a company where you, you might have 40 guys on the road. If you don't know how to manage people, you won't be successful. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It sounds too like you also have to be able to not only find people, but manage them and hopefully retain them. Um, good quality workers. Well, um, wow, Eddie, you are doing some uh, great things. Um, so tell me what, tell me what has been the most surprising for you owning your own business, being an entrepreneur. The most surprising. Yes. Was there something um, you were like, dag, I didn't think it was going to be this hard or, oh, this was easier than I thought. Uh, it's a lot of work, in the, especially in the beginning, because you may hold a lot of hats. You know, mm -hmm. at one point, you know, I, which I'm still my own secretary. That's probably the only thing I don't have an assistant. It's like the only thing I, I just refuse to get. Not there yet. I got to get a little more <laughs> money. Oh, okay, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, when you, most, you know, entrepreneurs that actually, because there's a difference between self-employed and having a business, right? A business means you can step away from it and it continues. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I have two other guys I could step away and they'll, you know, they'll be okay. But uh, in the beginning, you know, I had the whole multiple hats. I, you know, scheduled the inspection. I, I do the inspection. I do the report. I may also be on the back end of the website that night updating that stuff. Um, you know, I may be doing social media. You're trying to, you're trying to market and do that. You know, you're holding multiple hats. Whereas I just eventually, um, I was I gave up, but I was I just took the, the risk um, and just started, you know, giving giving up those things, especially the things I'm not good at. Right, the things that you're not good at as an entrepreneur, you should probably just figure out and find out how to just pay somebody because it's only gonna make you better, right? So uh, I don't do payroll any of that anymore either. I don't handle any of that. I have a I have a company that that. It does payroll. He's an accountant. He's a good guy, good bookkeeper. I would still say, look over your stuff, though, so you know what's going on. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, another company um, where um, they handle my taxes and escort declaration and all of that. Um, I have a social media company um, that handle that. Uh, so I have a, a company that handles the SEO website maintenance. Um, so I, yeah, I just worry about in inspecting. <laughs> wow. And you know what we didn't talk about, um, cause I know we're getting ready to close. We didn't talk about the name of your company. Can you tell me the name? 
Uh, which one? The logistics one? Uh, the uh, the inspection and oh. mediation. It's Good Life Inspection Services. Good Life Inspection Services. And where did that come from? Uh, <laughs> I stole it. Um, so, uh, Good Life Music Group is an Atlanta-based, uh, you know, music music label. Um, I, I happen to know the family that that founded it, and I just, I just, it just sounded like the perfect name for an inspection company because you know most people buying a house, they're first time buyers. I'm like, ah, okay, guys, I got to steal this one. Good yeah. life. <laughs> the life makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> and so then the, I'm sorry, I said. Oh, you said it was available. <laughs> okay. And so the the new company that's uh, that you're starting, you have the name for that one already too. I do. Um, it's complex logistics. You'd be surprised. I had to run through a hundred names. Um, apparently, there's a lot of different logistic companies out there. Uh, but it's complex at the moment. We'll see. The, we'll see uh, location. The, you know, pending. <laughs> how how that part goes. Okay. Well, Eddie, the last thing I want to do because, of course, this uh, uh, podcast is also about affirmations. So, two questions: How do you affirm yourself through this? I mean, you seem to be a fairly driven person, but how do you keep yourself going? Um, and um, and then, how would you affirm someone else? who wants to become an entrepreneur and start uh, businesses like you've done? Well, I'll answer the second question first. Okay. Uh, so I tell people, you know, just to go for it in a nutshell, but, you know, I think a lot of, not, I think a lot of people may have different circumstances uh, whether they have kids or things like that. But even if they don't, a lot of people I feel are just comfortable and complacent with where they are so they'll live their you know life saying i'm gonna start this business or i want to do this i want to do that um but who's to say you're gonna be living this long period of time um so i kind of you know i kind of live life um with the realization that it could be over tomorrow so i'm at least live it the way i want to um but i would tell people whatever it is you desire i mean just 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 make it happen just work for it if you fail at least you can say you tried um i mean and well, what do you have to lose you may lose a little money but you may make a lot of money you, you may surprise yourself you may succeed um you know if you're not willing to gamble on yourself what's the purpose of what's the person of, of, of being around uh, that's just the way i look at it i, I think yeah. if you can't gamble on yourself in life i don't understand what you're doing um Life is, 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 is much better when you're in control of, uh, as I say, two things, your time and how you make your money. Yeah, for sure. Love that. And I, I'm not going to let you go on that first question. <laughs> question. Um, good question. Um, I probably don't do enough. I probably don't. Uh, I'm, I kind of, not yet. <laughs> well, I mean, what keeps question. you? I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, um, I, I probably should do more. Um, and you know, maybe at times I'm more of a you know, having a lot of faith and just know it's gonna come. But I, I do grind a lot. Um, probably, you know, could grind some more as opposed to just, you know, thinking everything's gonna come to you. You know, you do have to work to stuff. Um, but I do I am a firm believer and, and uh you, you have to at least believe what you're trying to do in order to make it happen, um, which is why you know, all the things I want to accomplish, uh, you know, this year, I put on a vision board recently, put it in, you know, put it on the wall so I can look at it every day, uh, stare at it, you know, touch, touch certain things like, okay, you coming next, this done, you coming next, um, and just figuring out, you know, what it is uh, I need to do to work towards it. But you definitely got to believe it and then, um, you know, do, you know, if it's small steps, uh, small wins, um, you know, those matter. So do, do, you know, do what you got to do, check boxes to get there. And before you know it, whatever you're, you're working towards will, will be there. Um, surprise yourself. It's just a matter of, it takes action. You know, a lot of people just be believing, but they don't want to put, you know, they don't want to, you know, the action doesn't match the words. You gotta, you gotta do both. You gotta believe and you gotta work towards it. 
That's right. Faith without faith without works is dead. That is, I believe that for sure. Well, um, Eddie Jones, thank you so much for being a guest today. And to all of my listeners, um, I will make sure that all of Eddie's uh, information is in the show notes. You guys, if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, definitely use, is it Good Life? Tell me again. Life Inspection Services. Yep. Good Life Inspection Services. And this man is doing some things, okay? So he's going to obviously have some um, job openings coming in some other cities potentially. And so, Eddie, I just uh, want to just uh, wish you well, multiple blessings, continued blessings um, on all of your businesses. And again, thank you so much for being a part of the Finance and Affirmations podcast. No, I appreciate it. I'm glad I was able to get back on again. We'll have to we'll have to do it again after after the, the DSP is up and running. <laughs> yes, I would love that. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.